So while, while we load the slides, I'll just say that. So we've heard a good overview uh, from Danilo uh, from ST Microelectronics. Now we're talking, we're going to talk about one of the challenges that Danilo brought up, actually, compilers, right? And uh, uh, we have the pleasure to have with us Andrew Roush, uh, from software engineer from OctoML. Andrew, welcome on stage. Everyone can hear me? Great. Uh, well, it's an honor to be here. Um, let's get started. So uh, AI at the Edge has exploded over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, we now have a, a whole uh, class of devices uh, now that we previously thought was, was only available um, uh, through science fiction. We have computers we can talk to now. We have computers that can see, computers that can translate, um, and even maybe some kind of less predicted applications that are kind of funny, but in a scary way, maybe. Um, and uh, though many of these applications uh, begin as thin clients to, uh, to CloudML solutions, we are increasingly living at the edge, and uh, a variety of challenges are driving folks to run inference uh, on device. Now, all of these tiny ML deployments uh, have something in common. Like, uh, and we call that, uh, here at OctoML, we call that the deployment challenge, where if you line up all of the model definition frameworks uh, at the left here, and then you uh, place the places where you might want to run the model at the right, you'll notice that not every path here uh, is, is easy to traverse. This one right here um, may be quite easy. A fast implementation may uh, already exist for each layer. Uh, tools may already exist to translate the model graph into C, and you may have a robust uh, set of sort of test and debug tools to kind of validate the model um, that you're using on, on device. But not picking on anything in particular, another route may be very difficult. Um, you may have to find a hand optimize, uh, find or hand optimize an implementation for each layer. You may have to do some graph level work, such as tuning the memory uh, usage of your implementation. And depending on how many custom things you do, you may have to build your own set of testing debug tools uh, to help you validate the model uh, on your own. So like everything in firmware, um, the code running on device can be very different from the equivalent cloud code. Uh, even this incredibly simple model can produce an inscrutable error to someone from the perspective of Keras. Um, it looks kind of like a different language. Where is the error here? It can be pretty hard to tell. <laughs> and the problem gets worse um, because the, the picture I showed you before is a much more oversimplified uh, a picture of model deployment. If we consider something, maybe just a toy example that's a little bit closer to reality, the error could be anywhere in this process here. Um, and the problem gets worse when we move from, from doing things like debugging uh, stack traces on device uh, and, and, uh, and start considering more difficult challenges like uh, validating the accuracy of a model on device. Even more challenging, um, as I said, said here, this is just one example of a way you could deploy models onto a device. You might do something very different depending on the platform, the model, or your particular situation. You could train a quantized model, you could deploy something over the air, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, model deployment is a really challenging problem. And to master a problem like this, you need to speak a lot of different languages. Uh, ideally, every engineer that was involved in the model deployment process would just speak all of these languages. But if you think about that previous slide I showed, um, there are a lot of different full-time job descriptions you could go through in thinking about all of the different uh, uh, skill sets that you need to assemble to solve a problem here. And so if we can't have a polyglot um, working on this model deployment problem, what's the next best thing? Um, the next best thing uh, could be a translator. Uh, unfortunately, last I checked, Google Translate does not accept ARM stack traces as an input format. And so in lieu of that, uh, I give you uh, Apache TVM. Uh, Apache TVM is an open source deep learning compiler. And uh, it's a tool or a framework that accepts models defined in these popular machine learning uh, framework formats uh, above uh, and translates it into an optimized implementation that works on a range of hardware, um, everything from data, data center class C, uh, CPUs, GPUs, down to mobile phones, and also down to uh, tiny mail or bare metal devices, which is something we'll talk about uh, a little bit further here today. Uh, TVM has been used by uh, quite a number of, of people across the industry. Um, again, as I mentioned, it's an open source project. We have over 670 contributors from uh, industry and academia uh, alike. And uh, at our most recent TVM uh, user conference this past December, we had over 700 attendees. So now that I've kind of uh, introduced you to TVM, I wanted to talk a little bit about MicroTVM, uh, which is kind of the tiny ML part of TVM. MicroTVM is a subproject within the TVM project. It aims to leverage uh, the same common uh, uh, utilities and compil compilation flow to uh, run models uh, on bare metal devices. 
To that end, MicroTVM defines a runtime that works in places uh, without operating systems, uh, without virtual memory, and also uh, a runtime that's implemented in C. Uh, while you can, of course, bind this to uh, higher level languages, uh, we prefer to operate on this uh, sort of simplified base. Where is MicroTVM going? Um, MicroTVM aims to be a tool to help codify and automate the process of taking a model and deploying it onto any hardware target while taking into account things like uh, the type of hardware available, the constraints of the individual application, and the model being deployed. And what this really means is finding a way to integrate all of those languages that you might think of from the previous slides into a tool and then defining well understood transitions between those languages that the community can get behind as an open source community. So what are some of these languages we're talking about and how does TVM actually um, pull this off? Well, here I want to show you uh, three important, important phases of deployment with TVM and the languages involved there. In the first phase, uh, you run a model import, and this, this um, uh, TVM imports the model um, from the deep learning framework that defines it into a sort of common functional language we call Relay. Now, the goal of Relay is to be a canonical representation of uh, the model uh, that's sort of agnostic to the input uh, format that you're giving it. So for example, if a convolution in uh, Keras includes an activation, you would see a separate operator um, in the imported Relay program such that we can uh, represent these things um, sort of across all frameworks. Once you've uh, imported the model, it moves on to an optimization phase. And this centers around a process we call scheduling, in which chunks of Relay are translated into a procedural language we call tier. Now, I'm not sure if it, this slide is uh, the easiest to read from where you are, but tier is a little bit like C. You can see for loops and uh, array accesses, scalar computation here, but it also includes higher order things such as memory management, and this uh, fragment here can be referenced back to the relay that generated it, um, which is particularly useful uh, as a platform on which to build optimizations. Once we've then uh, imported, uh, uh, excuse me, optimized the model, uh, we move on to a code generation phase. Um, and this is where we uh, translate tier into a source or binary format that's appropriate for uh, the uh, platform uh, at hand. And so here I'm actually showing TVM generating C source code, but you can uh, just as well uh, generate uh, machine code by doing an IR to IR translation from tier into LLVM IR and leveraging LLVM to generate the machine code for your backend. Uh, we can also generate some other interesting languages such as CUDA if you're using uh, GPUs. Um, and lastly, if you uh, happen to be integrating your own accelerator, for example, you can configure TVM to emit um, a binary format that sort of encodes the uh, uh, tier in a way that your accelerator understands. Now, I want to uh, zero in for a second here on tier. Why should we even bother with this? Because, you know, the simplest thing to do would be to take um, your relay representation of the graph and then map each layer into sort of a uh, C implementation that, uh, that then uh, implements that layer. But um, Tier gives TVM quite a bit of power, and so I wanted to talk about it for a second. The first thing Tier does is it allows TVM to split apart the, pro the problems of model parsing and model optimization. Uh, more importantly, Tier allows TVM to define procedural optimizations over the model that are agnostic to the output language. And so the example that I you know, kind of come back to here is the same common sub-expression sub elimination pass. Excuse me, I can never say that right. <laughs> Uh, can be used on tier regardless of whether it's running on a CPU, on a GPU, on an accelerator that you might be implementing, or whether the sub-expression is actually uh, composed in pieces, uh, one piece that might run on a GPU and one piece that might be running on a CPU, for example. More interestingly, TVM can leverage this tier representation to perform common optimizations such as tiling, loop reordering, vectorization, tensorization um, automatically for your target. Uh, how it does this, TVM has a learning process where it sort of iterates over the various different combinations of tiling, uh, loop reordering, vectorization that makes sense for your particular target, for your particular workload, um, and it determines basically the fastest uh, uh, a combination of those uh, uh, optimizations um, through a process we call auto-tuning or auto-TVM. In the graph at the top right corner here, you can see um, kind of the throughput results as we iterate through the design space. And at, at the top, uh, corner, uh, sorry, excuse me, at the, the maximum of this particular graph, we tend to approach uh, the performance of hand-tuned or sort of off-the-shelf vendor libraries. Lastly, uh, TVM does translate the whole program into tier, so we have a procedural view of the whole program during compilation. And this allows you to do some very interesting things kind of at the whole model level, such as whole model memory analysis, and we'll come back to that a little bit later. Now, we talked a little bit about op automatic optimization strategies, but Sometimes there's already hand-tuned libraries available, accelerators. Um, TVM defines a, a compilation process called BYOC, bring your own compiler. 
This allows you to define a parallel compilation path for a subsection, or excuse me, a subgraph of the relay model and compile that um, kind of in tandem with TVM's own uh, built-in compilation flow. So TVM supports, uh, and I should say microTVM supports, um, offloading to uh, pre-built libraries such as CMSYSNN uh, for ARM processors, and it also supports offloading to accelerators uh, such as the Ethos U IP that ARM's developed uh, this year. And all of that was contributed by ARM, I should say. Um, so now that I've kind of told you a few things about microTVM, where are we today? So today you can install TVM, uh, and you can compile a model from a deep learning framework into a format we call model library format. And the idea is that this contains everything you need to deploy the model. Um, so it would contain some uh, metadata that might sketch out the memory requirements of the model. It contains the model source as TVM understands it. It contains uh, parameters that have gone through the TVM compilation flow and been simplified. And lastly, it contains the implemented model which consumes those parameters either in C or binary format. And this whole thing can be done from the command line using uh, a single command, uh, TVMC. You can then take that model library format piece and integrate it with your favorite firmware compilation tool, such as Arduino, as we're showing here, something we just recently added support for, uh, add in some uh, libraries that ship with microTVM, uh, some runtime libraries, and then compile and flash and run inference on the device. And all of this process is also automated through the same TVMC micro command that I mentioned before. Um, TVM then leverages those uh, automations to actually uh, perform this automatic optimization pass uh, uh, on the device. Um, so where does CVM fit in that workflow, that toy workflow that we uh, talked about at the beginning here? You can use CVM to validate the model on x86, optimize it for your particular target, integrate that optimized uh, implementation into your firmware, program the device, and validate the model on device there. So I just wanted to wrap up quickly by talking about some uh, recently landed work in micro TVM. Um, as I mentioned before, TVM has this auto TVM optimization uh, strategy, and that's actually just one of them as we kind of build out more. There will be more coming down the pipe. But we've now recently integrated support for auto TVM in micro TVM, uh, which you can do from a Python script. This will give you faster models. Um, we also now have whole program memory planning via an effort called Unified Static Memory Planner, uh, something pushed by the ARM folks. And um, this allows us to get a precise estimate of a, of a memory footprint for static models. Uh, and allows us to start exploring optimizations to lower it. Uh, lastly, uh, with our automatic project generation, uh, we can now create, um, sort of automatically generate Arduino projects that implement uh, any model that TVM can, uh, can import, and we can run that on device uh, via our remote control uh, RPC protocol. Uh, to cover some upcoming work in micro TVM that you guys should uh, uh, look out for, um, the first two things I want to talk about here are focused towards accelerator design. Um, uh, some folks from uh, uh, a consortium of folks from uh, ac both academia and industry uh, in, in Europe are working on. Uh, well, while it's all when, while it's always been possible to integrate accelerators with TVM using this BYOC flow, there are a lot of common touch points that are a little bit disorganized. And so, uh, folks notice that it would be really helpful to have an API to kind of organize and explain to folks how to integrate your accelerator with TVM. So uh, be on the lookout for this um, universal modular accelerator infrastructure, which is sort of an API that explains how to do that. On the runtime side, uh, we are also working on uh, modeling accelerators sort of in a first class way um, through this C device API work. Um, this models basically the accelerator uh, life cycle in TVM, everything from powering on the accelerator to copying tensor data into memory, running inference, and then finally you know, putting the accelerator into some sort of sleep state. On the UX side, um, a couple of things to highlight. Uh, we're, having, uh, we're looking forward to upcoming CLI support for auto TVM using uh, this TVMC command uh, for micro TVM. Uh, this will allow you to run tuning from the command line rather than um, uh, via a Python script. And lastly, something I'm particularly excited for, um, we are uh, going to be soon be pip installable uh, by uploading TVM to, uh, to PyPy, um, sort of the uh, standard way to install Python packages. As I mentioned before, MicroTVM is a community-driven effort, and we welcome new contributions. Uh, if you're implementing an accelerator, if you're implementing a model deployment pipeline, if you are looking at running models on uh, these tiny ML devices, uh, please take a look at us. Um, you can check out our roadmap for kind of a sense of the plan work if you'd like to get involved with that. Um, we also welcome new ideas on our Discuss forum, uh, on our Discord, uh, as well as we have a weekly TVM community meeting that I uh, invite you guys to check out and uh, come say hi, ask questions. Um, uh, and uh, introduce yourself. Um, this last slide, I, I just wanted to say, um, if you find this uh, kind of work interesting and you're interested in um, kind of a new position, uh, OctoML is a startup that 
uh, I work for and uh, a number of folks who, con who contribute to TVM also work for. And uh, we are hiring both uh, in the role of TinyML and also outside TinyML. So please check out our, our career page or get in touch if you're interested. And with that, I just wanted to say, again, um, TVM truly is a community project. Um, much of the work that I summarized here was authored by folks that actually don't work for OctoML and work, are, are members of the TVM community. We would not be here um, today uh, without their help. So um, thank you. Just like to wrap up and ask for questions. Thank you, Andrew, for talking about this very promising technology. Thank you. Thank you. Adam, you've got a question. Hi, very nice talk. Um, I'm trying to understand for, uh, you know, in this, the tiny ML space, we're talking about using uh, very small, let's say, MCUs. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we can't fit big memories into a very small MCU. So let's say we have a tiered system. We have local memory. You have more memory outside. Yeah, does, absolutely. Does micro TVM today have any way of managing uh, tiered memory, including, you know, scheduling, moving things, understanding that some things are slower than others? Can you control a DMA as well, not just the, you know, the neural network accelerator? Absolutely. Great question. Yeah. So that's something we're working in the direction of. Uh, with this unified static memory planner, uh, you can actually express to micro TVM, you can say, well, I have two different pools of memory, and these are contiguous blocks of memory. Um, and you can explain, you know, okay, well, if you have an accelerator, perhaps an accelerator can only access one of them, or if you just want to treat them differently, you can do it that way. And, uh, you know, kind of the next step is to do, is to implement what you said on top of that, which is to build support for uh, DMA intrinsics there. Now, we have some limited support for this, um, kind of in the context of lowering uh, kernels more to GPUs that involve kind of these shared caches. But as far as making those operations explicit, that's kind of the next step that we're working on to, uh, to actually start doing DMA background transfers and all that. And that's actually wrapped up a lot in this, uh, with this work on the C device API that I mentioned, this first class sort of um, interface around accelerators that we're expecting to land in the next couple of months. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Absolutely, we're, we're um, pushing in that direction. Okay, great, thank you. One last question. Yeah, I was trying to understand like uh, uh, what technology you're using, like uh, to you know convert the TF flight model to you know, C. So is like TVM kind of like it interprets the graph at runtime, or is it like you know compiles it to a very low-level format? Great so question. Yeah. You? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, TVM uh, through, so it, it actually has a couple of different executors, but the one that we're um, uh, primarily using with micro TVM these days is what we call the ahead of time executor. And so that uh, is sort of a whole program approach where we uh, model the whole program procedurally in the compiler uh, at compile time, and then we emit C code that actually directly runs that. And so if you don't know if this is going to work, I don't know if you're able to switch to like there's one hidden slide at the end of this, but um, the interface you get is very much a C-centric uh, interface. Um, and uh, you know, sort of, so, so you call this function here, and then it, uh, maybe you can just leave it here, that's fine. <laughs> and uh, the implementation of this function is just a series of calls to compile model functions inside of that. And so you can, you know, it's very accessible. You can go look at that C code, uh, debug it, change it, however you like to after it's uh, gone through the TVM compiler. Thank you, Andrew. Thank Thanks, you again. everyone. And we are very thankful for, for our sponsors. Uh, the executive, the premier sponsor this year is, is H Impulse. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, executive sponsors are ARM, Deep Light, uh, uh, Qualcomm, and Sintiant. Uh, Platinum sponsor Analog Devices, uh, Brainchip, Infineon, Clickatech, Latent AI, NXP, uh, Reality AI, Renaissance, Sony Semiconductor, and Synaptics, really. Very diverse company, great companies uh, who are really driving uh, tiny email forward. Uh, and um, uh, gold sponsors, PhotoHub, MicroAI, Prophecy, Seed Studio, SenseML, uh, ST Microelectronics, uh, Syncense, Exmos. And we have a list of uh, civil sponsors, Avion Devices, Aspinity, Siva, Emza, uh, GreenWave Technologies, Gravity, Hymix, HOTG, Imagimob, um, Itemis, uh, Lattice, Nota, uh, OmniML, PixArt, Plumerai, Kixo, uh, Rackner, Rixen, SAP, StreamAnalyze, Texel, and Google. So we are very uh, thankful for their support and more importantly for them being part of this community and driving it forward. 